Welcome everybody. We create chemistry for a sustainable future. That's BASF's corporate purpose. And one major pillar in this strategy is our chem cycling project. I'm very happy that Michael Prinz is here with me today from BASF's performance materials division to tell us a little more about chem cycling. Michael, hi. Hi, Richard. So there's been a lot of publications, a lot of talk in the industry about chem cycling, but please once again describe the process for us, please. Okay. Thanks, Richard. Yeah, I mean, I, I would like to start. I mean, the word camp cycling describes something is related to recycling. And in recycling, you have different possibilities to address the theme. You have, of course, the well-known mechanical recycling, which is the so shortest loop in order to close, let's say, a recycling loop. And then you have, in contrast to that, also the monomer recycling, where you break down a polymer into its building blocks in the monomers, and then you come back in the process where it comes to the polymerization, or you do it like in the chem cycling, where you build a pyrolysis oil of a mixed plastic waste, for example, and then you feed that all the way back at the level of the steam cracker. Mm -hmm. And this describes the process of chem cycling. You go back as much as possible in the value chain. Okay, so you just mentioned that mixed plastic waste can go into this process. Um, is this everything? No. Uh, I mean, there is a process that is normally starting from the crude oil mm -hmm. that goes to the refinery. There you transfer that into, let's say, naphtha, and the naphtha is then going, let's say, in our chemistry plants in the steam cracker where you build the building blocks, and from that you derive in our chemical plants the products. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what we do, and uh, we have several alternatives, we do use mixed plastic waste mm -hmm. as a primary use for this recycling oil. Mm -hmm. But we have also evaluated possibilities to work with uh, this recycling oil based on uh, end-of-life tires. Okay. And so we are using both in the process. Uh, that's interesting, um, end-of-life tires, because it's also pretty much an industry closed loop, right? Yes, indeed. I mean, this is the, the charming factor on end-of-life sector because you take this from the transportation industry, from car industry, you recycle that and you bring that stream back to the industry. Okay. So um, what is also, I think, very interesting for our customers is the question of allocation of the kind of contribution of this mixed plastic waste in the final product. I mean, it's a complicated... A chain with a lot of steps behind that. How can customers make sure that they actually get the content they yeah. want? That's a very good question because basically we are at the starting of this process. We, we're using millions of tons of NAFTA as a feedstock, fossil feedstock for our chemistry yet. But in the future, we will gradually increase the amount of this recycled oil. But for the time being, we need to develop or we need to to, to allocate our equivalence of this recycled feedstock onto the equivalent of the product. And in order to make sure that we are not, let's say, overselling, yeah, we have a, a certifier which is called Ecoloop. Mm -hmm. They are looking at our entire value chain and they're making sure and they issue a certificate to the customer where it is clearly written that this material that you, that you buy let's say a PA6C cycle with 30% glass fiber, that all the polymer content in this material is based on recycled oil that comes from the pyrolysis. Okay, I mean, that sounds very comprehensive and also very attractive. Are there already some uh, pilot projects in the market? Of course. We, in 2018, we made the first pilot with the company Jaguar Land Rover, where for the iPACE, we substituted an existing part. I think it's a shot rate of 4 kg. And uh, now we are just at the step of uh, commercialization. Mm -hmm. yeah? and, but it goes back two years ago where we started the first initiatives. We talked about the kind of different sorts of waste that can go into this. And you would imagine with everything we read every day in the newspaper that there's endless amounts of waste. But actually it's not that easy. How do you make sure that you get the quantities in order to keep this process going and also scale it up? Of course, very much depends on the demand. And we need an industry that is creating the demand. But we take the first step. We made a co-investment project 
uh, with the company QuantaFuel, where we invested together with them, the partners, we invested into a plant that is an integrated pyrolysis and purification plant that produces oil that is, uh, let's say, that have the, the specification for the steam cracker. Mm -hmm. yeah? But of course, we do not rely only on mixed plastic waste. Mm -hmm. Even so, it is for sure the biggest stream of raw material that you could imagine. But we also use end-of-life tires. Okay. Yeah? And also there, you might have read it into the press. Uh, recently, we made a contract with a Hungarian supplier of uh, this uh, oil. Um, and he supplies now initially 4,000 tons of this recycled oil based on uh, end-of-life tires. Of course, also with the possibility of scaling that up Absol later, absolutely. depending on the demand. We are developing the market. Mm -hmm. We're making an initial offer, mm -hmm. and we are very confident that this is a very appealing offer mm -hmm. because when you apply this, you have a plug-and-play solution. Mm -hmm. There is no whatsoever... Uh, let's say, headaches on quality, consistency. You do not have to modify your tools or whatever uh, is in your equipment mm -hmm. because basically the material is identical to the material that comes from the fossil-based mm -hmm. equivalent. Mm -hmm. I think that's very important for our customers, but I think what's uh, equally important is the CO2 aspect of this whole equation, let's say. I mean, this is another important factor. Absolutely, Richard. I mean, there we made ex extensive, uh, let's say, work on the life cycle assessment. Mm -hmm. And in our course of the life cycle assessment, we calculated, for example, a polyamide 6 that is coming from a fossil feedstock mm -hmm. and compared this to the chem cycle feedstock that comes from end-of-life tires. And when we compare those figures, we see that we uh, have a value of roughly 4.3 kg for the fossil, uh, let's say the, the product carbon footprint for the fossil version, and we can decrease that to a level of three. So 1.3 kilogram less CO2 emission per kilogram of material. Mm -hmm. So it is a significant reduction in the order of magnitude and more than 25%. Mm -hmm. yeah? um, the advantage of the system is you can apply it to any chemistry that we are producing in our integrated chemical production. So we can calculate it and sell it to customers based on a PA6, mm -hmm. but we could easily transfer that also to an isocyanate, for example. Mm -hmm. And we have already major interest of industrial customers mm -hmm. also to, let's say, uh, um, uh, proliferate this system also to other classes of products. So now, actually, we, we are at a time where this the whole chemistry competence, the Verbund system, knowing the value chain is becoming more important than ever. Yes, and I think it is a very unique fit to us because we, as being integrated until the drilling hole of, let's say, the, the, the crude oil, we can play this game. We can inbound this raw material and proceed it in a way to be 100% to be recycled based on products that are 100% prime grade specification. So it's really a, a very excellent match for us and also for the customers. Michael, thanks a lot for those insights on the chem cycling project. I think it was very, very interesting. Maybe you want to give it a 30 second summary to our customers out there. Yeah, well, uh, summarizing the advantages is plug and play, no constraint on quality, uh, on tooling, on complexity in your industry, safe supply, because we are guaranteeing, let's say, to grow with the demand in the market. You're addressing at the same time the recycling quotas and the CO2 reduction. And this is a perfect fit. Perfect fit is also being available in the chat right now. Michael will be there. A lot of other colleagues will be there later on to answer your questions, to discuss with you about the future of chem cycling and about sustainability in the automotive industry particularly. Thanks a lot for watching. Stay tuned. BASF. We create chemistry.